on this process. All right, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, hopefully I'll take you to the Northwest uh, High Court. We have live visuals there. Let's put it up. Uh, the Northwest man convicted of a double, 2018 double murder, will shortly know how long he will be in prison. Uh, the Northwest High Court in Mahikeng uh, will sentence Zander Belsma, who was 19 years old at the time of these crimes. And remember, he was convicted of killing two Teenagers at the Hur School Stella Hostel will bring you those live visuals next. All right, we understand that the judge has just walked in. Let's take you back there now. All right, uh, proceedings not quite underway. We're waiting for the judge to deliver or hand down the sentence with regards to uh, Zander Bailsma. Just a reminder about the story. He was 19 years old at the time of this crime. It took place in 2018, double murder. Uh, he was convicted of killing two teenagers at the Hur School Stella Hostel. So when that judgment is handed down, we're told, we're told that uh, the judge has walked in. So let's take you back there now. Yes, thank you. Take down the following judgment on sentence. Mr. Bailsma, you have been convicted of two counts of murder. It is now the task of this court to impose a suitable sentence upon you. This court must take into account your personal circumstances, the nature and the seriousness of the offenses that you are convicted of, as well as the interest of society. It is right that the court, in considering an appropriate sentence, must have regard to and take into consideration the aims of punishment. These are deterrence, retribution, rehabilitation, and prevention. The court should also not, never lose sight of the element of mercy, which has been described as a balance and humane state of thought, which should temper the approach to the factors to be considered in arriving at an appropriate sentence. Mercy has nothing in common with maudlin sympathy for the accused. It recognizes that fair punishment may sometimes have to be robust, excuse insensitive censoriousness in sentencing a fellow mortal and so avoid severity in anger. However, the measure of the scope of mercy depends upon the circumstances of each case. See in this regard, State vs. Ceylon and others, 2019-1, SACR 698 in brackets GJ. Starting with your personal circumstances. These are contained in the pre-sentence report, compiled and testified to by Ms. Perignani and submitted as an extra T to form part of the record. Advocate Mel, your legal representative, emphasized the following about your personal circumstances, which this court must take into consideration. You were born on the 13th day of May 1999, and you are currently 21 years of age. At the time of the commission of these offenses, you were 19 years of age. You are single and have no dependents. You are the only child. 
your parents are divorced which divorce negatively affected you you were employed at your father's farm earning an income of 4,000 rand monthly you are incarcerated awaiting the finalization of your trial in excess of two years the pre-sentence report states under the heading evaluation the following the offender referring to yourself is not showing any remorse of what he did and this might be a stumbling block in realizing the lifetime pain he has caused to the two families due to the violent crime to the innocent and unarmed children the fact that the offender was suspended from school school hostel might be an indication that the parents of the offender failed to can reprimand the offender but they saw their son as innocent from the offenses whereas his behavior was not changing but rather it was getting worse on a daily basis it is evident that the offender also portrayed behavioral patterns as he went to several disciplinary hearings at school and was ultimately expelled from the school hostel even though it was not proven but the offender seems to be suffering from anger issues as in most of the statements he made threats and did not do anything about it therefore anger management programs might assist in dealing with his behavior possibility exists that the offender was playing mind games with the parents or taking advantage of the parents not residing in the same place as a way of getting away with uncontrollable behavior as he might have seen that as an opportunity to get away with satisfying himself for unknown reasons it was evident that the incident affected learners on different phases or levels in their personal life respectively as the incident affected the healing process to so many learners and that can be traumatizing to children who are in their teenage stage as they are trying to adjust to life stages and they may need different support systems the second disease marna was known to the offender as a cousin of which he was supposed to protect care and love her but instead he failed to do that and this indicated that in most instances innocent people are hurt by people who are supposed to be their support system as stated by attachment theory that early experience are an important foundation for later social competence and further state that childhood development and relationships between parents and children usually parents are important foundation for late social competence possibly the possibility exists that the separation of biological parents while the offender was very young might have affected the childhood development as the parents might have lost control in monitoring proper development of the child but rather they were respectively trying to be the best to the offender without monitoring the childhood development of the offender due to change of environments at an early stage the fact that the mother to chanel was unable to control her emotions is an indication how deep she is hurting as she had developed a relationship with her only child and a sudden death impacted on the mother's life she is going through different stages of asking herself questions and she might not even find answers anytime soon it is evident 
that Marna's mother is also struggling to cope and has impacted on the life as she is hiding her feeling by trying to sustain the family relationship and that might affect the process of dealing with the loss of her daughter. She preferred to focus on assisting other family members to deal with the loss and work on the healing process. The fact that the offender threatens Marna's father about shooting him might be an indication that he is not seeing anything wrong with his behavior, but rather he might be a self-centered person who will do anything that satisfies him and he does not think of the after effects of any action he will take. As a result, this shows disrespect even to adults. It's every parent's goal to see that children prosper in life, especially if investment were done while the child was young. But with the parents of the deceased, their respective dreams were shattered by a person who is not seeing anything wrong with his action, actions, and even after the court of law pronounced on his guilt, he was unable to admit any wrongdoings. The violent crime committed by the offender at school has left an emptiness in the life of the two families of the deceased and might not be closed by anything because they will never see their children again. The level of violent crime in the country has reached an alarming proportion and it poses a threat to the transition of democracy and creation of developmental opportunities for all, which are the primary goals of the Constitution. Close quotation. This court must also take into account the fact that the offences of which you are convicted of are very serious offences. Murder is undoubtedly one of the most serious offences that can be committed. Two young girls, Chanel O and Marna Engelblech, lost their lives. This is a double murder. Chanel was 17 years and Marna 18 years old at the time they met their untimely deaths. This court must also take cognizance of the circumstances under which they met their untimely deaths. Because Chanel, your former girlfriend, had moved on with her life whereas you could not, you mentioned to Anastasia that you would turn her life into hell. So much so that she would commit suicide. You carefully planned and executed the killing of Chanel and created a false impression that she had committed suicide. As already alluded to in the judgment, this offense was premeditated and preplanned. The same, however, does not apply and cannot be said about the murder of Marna. In this court's judgments on the merits, the circumstances leading to Marna's death is outlined because Chanel told you that Marna would not approve of the reconciliation and continuation of your love relationship with her. You decided to eliminate Marna when the opportunity presented herself when she went to the bathroom. However, this court must also take into consideration the uncontested and uncontroverted evidence of Mr. Stefanus Engelbrecht, Marna's father, who testified in aggravation of sentence. He testified that about two months before the incident, Marna showed him text messages on her phone, which you sent to her. You insulted her and sweared at her by using vulgar language in relation to her private part. Because Mr. Engelbrecht raised the issue with your father, 
You called him and threatened to shoot him. Why this evidence was only presented at the sentencing stage and not during trial, I don't know, because it clearly indicates the motive you had in eliminating Marna if regard is had to the fact as stated by yourself in your statement that Chanel told you to sort things out with Marna as she being Marna would not approve of your relationship with Chanel but be that as it may what makes these offenses gruesome and what makes it more aggravating is the fact that it was two young girls who were murdered. This is indeed a case also of gender-based violence which you perpetrated on two vulnerable young girls. Your actions are indeed disgraceful and appalling. You showed no respect towards them. You insulted and swear at them by using vulgar language, coach in crude gynecological terms, as testified to not only by Mr. Stefanus Engelbrecht, but also Brandon Victor. This court must also take into account the interests of society in imposing a suitable sentence. There is a huge outcry by society that gender-based violence which engulfs our society need to be stopped. The violence perpetrated by men in society against women counterparts need to end. The only way that it can be stopped is to impose harsher, harsher sentences. The violence perpetrated by men against women is also very rife in the area of jurisdiction of the court. And when offense or offenses are prevalent, courts are called upon to impose tougher sentences in order to curb the occurrence of the particular type of offense or offenses. These offenses have also attracted huge media interest. The legislature enacted the Criminal Law Amendment Act 105 of 1997 as amended. This is commonly called the Minimum Sentence Act, which prescribed minimum sentences for certain type of offenses. The sentence prescribed where murder is premeditated or preplanned is that of life imprisonment if there are no substantial and compelling circumstances present which warrants a deviation. Your counsel, Advocate Mel, submitted inter alia that your youthfulness, your emotional immaturity, and the fact that you are a first offender are substantial and compelling enough for this court not to impose life imprisonment as a sentence. This court have carefully considered in respect of count one, which relates to the death of Chanel Hoog, whether there are indeed such circumstances present. As correctly pointed out by Advocate Smith on behalf of the state, there is a difference between personal circumstances and substantial and compelling circumstances. This court finds that the circumstances outlined by your counsel are not substantial and compelling enough for this court to deviate from imposing the prescribed minimum sentence. This court is mindful of the dictum in S vs. Machichi, 2011, 1, SACR, 40, in brackets, SCA, in which the Supreme Court of Appeal stated that courts should not deviate from imposing the prescribed minimum sentence of life imprisonment for flimsy reasons. The legislature have spoken and ordained these minimum sentences 
for certain heinous crimes for a reason. To quote from paragraph 23 of that judgment, despite certain limited successes, there has been no real let up in the crime pandemic that engulfs our country. The situation continues to be alarming. It follows that, to borrow from Malchas, it still is no longer business as usual. And yet, one notices all too frequently a willingness on the part of sentencing courts to deviate from the minimum sentence prescribed by the legislature for the flimsiest of reasons. Reasons as here that do not survive scrutiny. As Malchas may explain, courts have a duty despite any personal doubts about the efficacy of the policy or personal evasion to it to implement those sentences. Our courts derive their power from the Constitution and like other arms of state owe their fealty to it. Our constitutional order can hardly survive if courts fail to properly patrol the boundaries of their own power by showing due deference to the, legitim to, the legis to the legitimate domains of power and the other arms of state. Your Parliament has spoken. It has ordained minimum sentence for certain specified crimes. Courts are obliged to impose those sentences unless there are truly convincing reasons for departing from them. Courts are not free to subvert the will of the legislature by resort to vague, ill-defined concepts such as relative youthfulness or other equally vague and ill-founded <coughs> hypotheses that appear to fit the particular sentencing officer's personal notion of fairness. Predictable outcomes, not outcomes based on the whim of an individual judicial officer, is foundational to the rule of law which lies at the heart of our constitutional order. Close quotation. The offense of murder is extremely rife in the area of jurisdiction of this court. It can no longer be business as usual, engulfing not only our province, but also the country. The scourge of violence must be stopped. Life has just become too cheap in our society. The brutality of the murders in this case cannot be ignored. As your counsel, Advocate Nell, so eloquently put it, it was indeed brutal and callous. You were showing or having an insensitive and cruel disregard for Chanel and Marna. You strangled Marna to death in the bathroom and left her body there. Thereafter, you went to Chanel and strangled her. These two murders were separated in time and place, which is indicative of the fact that you must have comprehended what you were doing. This court has taken all the facts, factors, and circumstances relevant for the impositioning of a suitable sentence into consideration. This court is also mindful that none of these facts, factors, and circumstances must either be over or underemphasized, but it need to be carefully balanced in order to arrive at a just and appropriate sentence. This court, as a high court, has the common law inherent jurisdiction to impose life imprisonment as a sentence if the circumstances warrant the impositioning 
of such a sentence. May the accused please arise. Having con carefully considered all the facts, factors and circumstances of this case, this court is of the considerate view that the following would be an appropriate sentence. On count one, that is the murder of Chanel Ho, you are sentenced to life imprisonment. On count two, that is the murder of Marna Engelbrecht, you are sentenced to life imprisonment. In terms of section 103 of the Firearms Control Act, Act 60 of 2000, you are declared unfit to possess a firearm. The court will now adjourn. There you go, breaking news uh, on the agenda's watch. Sentence being handed down with regards to Xander Bailsma. Count one, with regards to Chanel, life imprisonment. Count two, with regards to Marna, life imprisonment. Also declaring him unfit to possess a firearm. Xander Bailsma was uh, found guilty in February this year uh, for the murder of two teenagers, Marna and Chanel at the Horse School Stella uh, Hostel. The court heard in sentencing report uh, compiled by a social worker. The, the report showed that Bailsma did not show any remorse for his action and was not willing to take responsibility. The defense, on the other hand, asked the court for leniency since Bailsma is the first time offender and is still very young. Remember, the age at which he committed this crime. He was uh, 19 years old at the time of these crimes. It is a case that talks to the issue of gender-based violence. It is a case that talks to the issue of violence in general in society. We heard from the judge saying that gender-based violence needs to end. And the only way to stop it is to issue harsher sentences. Uh, the judge saying the scourge of violence must stop. Do we have Toboko Pakedi on the line? Toboko Pakedi is our reporter covering this story. All right, we don't have a quite ready yet. We'll try to bring into the conversation uh, after the break, get a sense of what she felt in court, what did she witness from her vantage point at the Northwest High Court. Next. <laughs>